Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog. This week, happy to announce that we'll be going back to working on Blink and making improvements there. Of course, last week I was working on my website to try and get that knocked out. And since I completed it, I was actually able to successfully enroll in Apple's developer program as a business. So that's got us completely unblocked. The goal this week is to make some final improvements to Blink and implement some of y'all's suggestions and then get that uploaded to the Apple portal and the Android portal and get some beta versions out there to test users to make sure this thing actually is fun to play on people's phones. So that's the goal this week. We'll go ahead and jump into the improvements that I want to make. All right, so what improvements do we want to make this week? First of all, I got a lot of feedback from you guys that the rain and the snow effects can be a little bit distracting. And one thing that you guys kept suggesting was to make the precipitation a bit more translucent. So that's the first thing I'm going to try to achieve this week. I love the effects themselves, but I don't want them to be distracting. So I think that's a pretty good compromise. Next, I think I can improve the snow effect by giving the flakes a little bit of rotation uh, with the noise effect so that it's not like just very uniform rotation, but just kind of rotating as they flutter down towards the ground. And alongside that, someone pointed out that snowflakes are indeed six-sided and not like four-sided or whatever I made my sprite. So I think I've got a few improvements I can make there. Next up, someone suggested that I should disable the continue button when an ad is not available rather than completely remove it. I think this will be a little less confusing for the user. Should be easy, so that's a no-brainer. And finally, insect names. Right now on the unlock screen, there are just values below each insect that you can unlock, you know, however many points you have to get to unlock it. But I think it'd be fun if once you unlocked that character, you saw the name of what it was. That would help, I guess, lend some clarity to the weird little insects that I drew on the iPad. So I think that'll be a fun thing to implement. And uh, yeah, that's on the table this week too. Alrighty guys, that's the plan. As always, we're starting on Tuesday, we're a day late, but whatever, let's jump into it. All right, so we got all those changes made. It took about an hour and a half, and I actually live streamed the entire time I was doing that. So I got some really cool immediate feedback from a lot of the folks in the chat about the way we were tweaking snow and some of the other stuff we worked on. If you showed up for that live stream, thanks a lot. I had a lot of fun, and I'll definitely be doing that again in the future, so stay tuned. For now, let's go check out the changes that we made. So the very first thing we did was improve our precipitation effects. And as you can see, the snow looks so much better than it did before. Thanks to everyone in the live stream who has given me direct feedback as I was working on this. I think there's no way it would have looked that good if you guys hadn't been giving me feedback on the spot like that. So the main changes we made to this snow were one, to decrease the amount that we're emitting over time. Two, to decrease the size range, or really we kept the size range the same, but just moved everything to be a little bit smaller. You can see this snowflake is super small while the rest of them are just, I don't know, kind of medium sized, I guess, compared to how they were before. We also decreased the opacity of the snowflakes and added a little bit of rotation. And overall, with all these effects combined, I think the snow just looks so much better. It's way less in your face, and I think just overall a big improvement to the effect. The next big change is on the unlock screen here, and you can see it already. For the characters that we have already unlocked, now instead of just seeing the point values that you needed to unlock them, we see the names of the characters. So as you unlock all these characters, it may not be clear what they are right now, but as you move down the list and unlock everything, you'll start to realize at least what I attempted to create when I was drawing the pixel art. I think that's a cool enhancement, uh, just gives you a little bit more of a feeling of what you're unlocking. I think tonight was a total success. We made a ton of progress. I just had a blast doing the live stream and hanging out with you guys. So I think I'm gonna celebrate by taking the rest of the night off and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. Welcome back guys. It is actually Monday afternoon, about a whole week from my last update. I'll spare you guys the details, but I spent some time traveling last weekend to go home and I've also been spending a lot of time working on some administrative stuff for my business, including setting up my Android developer account, which I've done, and starting progress setting up my Apple developer account. Hitting a few snags along the way there because I had an old individual developer account there and I'm working on migrating some stuff over. So I'm hoping that gets done soon, but in the meantime, from my last live stream, you guys gave me even more suggestions to improve Blink and that's what I'm going to focus on until we can get this thing into beta. I'd really like to do another live stream sometime soon, either tonight or in a few days later this week. Most of the stuff that I have to do this week can be done on stream, but I do have a few things off stream that I want to work on tonight. The first of those is sitting down with my iPad Pro and my Apple Pencil and taking another look at my high-res Firefly character. You guys have said that you like that artwork, but it just doesn't look right next to all the other far more pixelated characters. So 
I'm either gonna revisit the way that looks or design something completely different, and once I have that, then I'll save the implementation of that into Blink for whenever I stream this week. So it's been about 20 minutes and I think I've come up with some pretty cool cicada art. I'm actually very happy with the way it turned out, but I think I'm going to save the full color reveal until we actually throw it into the game. So it's just after 6.30 at this point. I'm not quite sure I want to start a stream this late, so instead of doing all the fun stuff I had planned for tonight, what I'm going to do is try to make some progress on the in-app purchases code. Now Unity has a cross-platform API for this, and even though I don't have my ID set up in the Android and Apple developer portals, I should still be able to make some progress, and this has been on my backlog forever, so time to make some progress on it. So I spent about an hour researching and designing the system that I would want to use for securing my player preferences and implementing my in-app purchases. I figured out how to do it all, but I haven't actually done it yet, and I just haven't written any code. That said, I feel good about the plan. I'm going to take the rest of the night off. Maybe actually developing that system would be good content for a stream. I don't know. But uh, anyway, pretty pleased with the progress tonight. Excited to show you guys my Cicada artwork later this week. And uh, yeah, catch up with you later. What's up everybody? It is Tuesday afternoon after work. My plan is to come home today and make some more progress. I was hoping that Apple would have gotten back to me by now about my developer account so we can move things forward into this beta, but they haven't yet. So all that's left to do is to make the few small code changes still required before I actually launch a beta of Blink for the first time. The three small tasks I want to knock out this afternoon are introducing my new character to Blink to replace the high-res Firefly that people didn't care for so much. I want to create some kind of scroll indicator for the character select screen so that you know you can scroll down to the other unlockable characters. And finally making a tweak to make the player track your finger more closely as you're dragging it across the screen. I'm going to try to knock all that stuff out now and I'm probably going to live stream it. So I'll see you guys on the other side. Already just finished up about an hour long live stream, had a great time. People poured in and had great suggestions, so thank you guys so much for those of you who stuck around for the live stream and helped me improve Blink. So I'll go ahead and show you what we worked on. The first thing we did was incorporate this new Cicada character which I drew last night. I think he looks actually really cool. He's got these red eyes on either side of his head. Very alien looking as I personally think Cicadas are and uh, also a pretty big, kind of bulky looking character, which just turned out well. I see and hear these things all the time. I'm guessing they might be pretty familiar to you guys too, so I thought it would make a good character for the game. So that was the first change we made tonight. Next up was a tweak, or actually a couple tweaks to the unlocks page. Uh, you can see we've actually reordered some of the insects here. Uh, the Luna Moth and the Hummingbird are now further up, as are the Wasp and the June Bug, and the Cicadas down here on the third row. Uh, the reason I did this was just to make some of the characters that I think both myself and my viewers in the stream thought were the coolest characters. I wanted to make them further on in the unlock progression just so that you'd have something cool to work towards. So that was that change. I also added these up and down arrows here on the left side of our character selection to kind of give the player an idea that they can scroll on this page because when the page loads here it looks like there are only eight unlockable characters. Now this is not totally optimal yet. These aren't clickable. It doesn't scroll. It's just kind of there to show you that you can scroll. So I might be looking to implement some kind of a scroll bar in the future to improve the user experience a bit. Finally, we made a pretty important gameplay tweak, and that's related to how the player tracks your finger as you drag it across the screen. Before tonight, there was actually a pretty significant delay between when the player would actually catch up to your finger, but I've made it quite a bit quicker so that you can play with a bit more precision. I think what this will end up meaning is that if you're more precise with your finger movements, you'll perform better and be able to get further into the round, and it won't get frustrating if you have to move all the way across the screen real quick and the player's too far behind. So, of course, I'm going to test this a bunch on my mobile devices and see if this is really an improvement. So we made a bunch of progress tonight, and coupled with the progress that we made like early last week when we did our first live stream, I think Blink is in a pretty good place for this devlog. Sorry this one's been so split up, it's been like a week and a half in the middle of the week, but 
That's just how life is sometimes, right? Hoping still to get Blink into beta soon. I'm just waiting on Apple to finally get back to me. It's really annoying having a blocker that I can do nothing about, but that's just kind of how this goes sometimes. Thank you guys for joining me for this devlog. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for more devlogs and live streams, and I just really appreciate your support. See you in the next one.